Tūriwera, a vast region of remote native forest and historical home to Ngai Tūhoi. Mō te hia rautau a Ngai Tūhoi e noho ana i ēnei pai maunga me ēnei whārua. A mai rāno e koe kai ana i ēnei ngahere. Ko te mere tētahi o aua kai rangatira. The Tūhoi Tua Whenua Trust is hopeful that a new honey business based here in Ruatahuna will once again have people enjoying honey from the ngahere and that it will bring positive impact to the local environment and also to the community. So in terms of the forest, the forest is, is very important because it's been handed down to us by our parents and it's our job to make sure that continues into the generations to come. But we, the Tuafinua, we are the caretakers of the forest for now. And in the meantime, try and create some source of income for the community without damaging or impacting on our forest. Ko te whakatipu anō i te ngahere i tēnei rohe, tētahi o ngā aronga matua o te uepū. Nā te hekenga o te pāpore manu taketake, ko riro mā ngā pī te hai o ngā rākau taketake e ruirui. Nā kōnā hoki te whakāro kia whakatūria he umanga mahi miere. The Trust has a kaupapa of uh, firstly protecting the land, and then we have um, two major goals, and one is around um, protecting and restoring the nahere and the ecosystems of our forests and land. Um, but at the same time, we have objectives to utilise the land um, in such a way that the people of the Tuafinua have uh, some benefit from the land. Um, the honey project and what has now become our honey business um, was um, born of both of those goals. We cold called uh, Dennis Watson, who is a, um, a beekeeper and has a big um, honey production operation in the Wairarapa. And um, he didn't know us, but he was interested in supporting something in, for Māori development. So he very kindly agreed to donate some hives to our honey operation, and that's how we started. So on the utilisation side, um, it provides us with um, the potential for a commercial base for the trust from which we would be able to um, make returns to owners of the land. Um, on the protection and restoration of our nahere side. Um, the bees in the forest are an important part of the ecosystem and that they assist with pollination and um, ensure that there's seeding and fruiting of our forests each year. Um, the key thing that we've found in the last 10 years uh, since the varroa mite has been in New Zealand, um, it's wiped out all the feral honey beehives throughout our forest and um, it's only through having managed beehives that we're able to maintain a bee population. I marama te uepū tua whenua o tūhoi, ko te poipoi i te pāpori pī, tētahi wahanga nui o te whakaora anō i te ngahere. Nā reira e toru ngā koromaki o te whakatū i te hōtaka mānoa hani. Tuatahi he whakatū umanga whaihua ki tēnei rohe tūwao, tuarua he whakatū tūranga mahi, tuatoru he āwhina i te whakatipuranga mai anō o te ngahere. Ko te mahi mā tāmua, he whakangungu i ngā tangata o te hapuri. I was approached by um, the trust if I wanted to take on a training opportunity and, uh, to do with the bees and well, at the time I knew nothing about the bees, so I was well, not hesitant, but you know, you know, there's not many employment opportunities here in Joatahuna, so we thought it was a good avenue to try out. They approached a company in Masterton, and they offered to take on a trainee and train us up and do all they could to help us start out. So yeah, that was four years ago, I think, and yeah. I knew absolutely nothing about bees other than they sting and make honey. Yeah, I just went in and started. But um, I learned heaps in the last two years 
I've been doing like a paper with Telford study, a beekeeper's course, and this teaches you everything about bee anatomy and the flowers and everything to do with the bee and um, yeah, the industry. Just being around Nick because he had um, been doing it for two years and I just saw how he was and how he was relaxed about it and I pretty much just copied what he was doing. So this is one of our hives here, so the first thing we do is take a little. Yeah, this is an empty honey box that never got filled up during the season, so we just left it on there as space for the bees to live in. And this is the queen excluded and stops the queen from coming up into the other boxes. So this is the, the brood box, what we call the brood box, where all the queen and all the workers live. Each, each of these brood boxes probably contains about 20,000 bees. This is um, the frame and this is what we call the brood that the, the queen lays into the, the cells, lays an egg in and then the worker bees put food into it for, the, for to eat and then um, they cap it over and in about three weeks a new bee will hatch out of there. And the queen will probably can lay about, at her peak, 1,800 eggs a day. Might be biased. Our honey compared to others is a bit it's a lot sweeter and cleaner. Yeah, it's got a real unique taste, I think. Do you think that has to do with the environment that they're in? Yeah, the environment around us, I think, has a, has a lot to do with it. They, they say that because the bees like use water, so the cleaner the water is, the better the honey's going to be. So we've got some of the best water in the world here, so that contributes to it. Our clean, green Uruwera forest, and you know, what more could you say? That's, that, that says it all right there. E haere ake nei, ko te mere manu ka te mere rongonui o Aotearoa. Engari, kaore ngā piorua tahuna i te mohi o ki tērā. Rima ngā tūtanga whenua e tiakina ana e te ue pūtua whenua tūhoi i te whārua orua tāhuna. Ia rātau e whakapeto ngoe ana ki te whakaora anō i te ngahere ki tōna āhua o mua, ka tūpono ngā kaimahi ki te whakaaro kia whakatū umanga miere i ngā pī o te rohe. Ko te whainga tuatahi kia mahi a he miere mānuka, Engari, he whakatau anō tā ngā pī o te urewera. The wonderful thing about the indigenous forest in New Zealand, our nahere, particularly here in Ratahuna, is that a number of the trees are actually designed for pollination by birds, and so they have this surplus of nectar that's really for the bird population. Um, and that's like a mecca for bees because they just simply drip with nectar and that makes it very easy for the bees to collect that nectar to then make their honey. Nō reira, hea tēnei momo rākau, Brenda? This is a mahoi tree and the mahoi tree is a major part of our um, honey operation. It's a key tree from which, we, um, from which the bees collect their nectar to make honey. The mahoi tree um, has got a botanical name, Malocytus ramiflorus. Uh, Malocytus comes from two words in Greek, uh, mali, which is honey, and uh, kaitos, which is a receptacle. So we refer to it as a little honey pot, and um, that's the nature of the flower and how the uh, nectaries, or the place where the nectar is held, is on the flower. Um, the bee comes to the flower and it comes for pollen and nectar and they're making uh, mahoi honey of course from the nectar that's collected from the flower. We also have manuka in the bush but interestingly we don't get any uh, manuka production in our area although we have hillsides of it but as long as there's native bush around it the bees will prefer to go to the other types and uh, we've consistently found this every year since we've been in operation. Manuka honey is obviously the you know the, the top thing at the moment and um, especially in the honey industry and um, we're, we're just coming from a different point and trying to uh, put 
our unique, you know, difference in there, and, and that's Mahoya. It has a different taste, it's light on the palate, um, it's quite a light coloured honey, and when it's runny, it's really golden, yeah. We were fortunate enough to um, be gifted 50 hives back in 2011 to basically start us off with our honey business. And we doubled, actually. Um, we went into 120 hives and we produced uh, two tonne of honey. So that was our first real harvest. Branding is unique. Mahoe honey has had its challenges and those are around the, um, the type of honey. So no one else in New Zealand produces Mahoe honey. Well, honey businesses just mix it in as a bush blend and you know, mix it into manuka or, or sell it branded as a bush blend. So um, trying to educate people about what mahoe is and where it comes from, yeah, that's where the challenges lie. Why do you smoke the hives? You know, the smoke incites sort of uh, panic. So they start just eating honey. You know, after they've eaten honey, they're a bit more passive, I suppose. Yeah, so that's a, a, a honey super there that, that we um, harvest our honey from. Should be full of um, capped honey frames. So all we're going to do is we'll take it off the hive and we'll sit it on this rack and we blow all the bees out to get rid of the bees. Because we're going to extract them, we don't want any bees in the boxes. Once we do, once we've got rid of all the bees, we just chuck it on the back of the truck and cover it up. Yeah, this is a um, capped frame of honey, so we'll just cover it in wax cappings, so it's, so it's ready to go and get extracted. Hey. How's it going? Yeah, going good. Just bought some um, honey and have a look at. So um, uh, what we have here is a freshly harvested box honey, and I'll pull out a frame to show you. Yeah, this is a um, fully capped frame of honey. So yeah, if you feel this frame, it's quite heavy. So looking at about three, maybe four kgs of honey in there, it takes them when there's a good nectar flow in the bush, maybe two and a half weeks to fill up a box. But um, if you had drawn out frame, which we'll end up having eventually, it'll, they can do it in five days. So the drawn out frame is the one that's got the comb in it already, which is what you're going to get back from your processing yeah. plant. Yeah, mm. and that's, that's been a big job for us starting out as a new business, was getting, like going from new gear to getting drawn out frames and stuff like that. Yeah, it was pretty much starting from scratch. Kaore he whare tātari o Mānoa Hani New Zealand i tēnei wā. Nā reira, ka tukunga ngā taitapa mere ki wāhi kē tātari tia ai. Tuatahi ka waruwaru hia te wāki, kātahi ka tukunga ngā taitapa ki te pūrere tātari kia turuturu mai ai te mere. Kia mutu te pua waitanga o ngā rākau o te ngahere, ka mutu hoki te wākohi miere. Engari, a rā atu anō ngā mahi hei whakatikatika mo te pua waitanga e whai ake nei. We've got a number of kaimahi, we've got about four, three or four kaimahi that work on a part-time basis. Um, so we've, uh, with, with the trust, um, in the Manawa business, we've got a strategy and um, policies around trying to create employment. So it's a job shared thing. Our um, current jobs are not full time at the moment, um, but we've got a number of guys who are skilled in different areas and um, utilising those skills, um, like uh, beekeeping for that industry as well as um, woodworking for creating the boxes and, and that sort of mahi. So, yeah. <laughs> Like uh, we, we, we make up our own hives that they're sent in from uh, Rotorua and we bang them all up together. They come like in these types of 
like pallets with uh, all the pieces we need. Then after that we have our bases which we make ourselves for the hive to sit on. So the uh, hive goes on there. We paint all our hives up in here. And then down here we have some frames which haven't been um, worked on from the bees yet. So that's just an empty frame. But they look like this. So this is um, foundation, they call it. And this is what the bees do to the, to the empty frames. And this is where we, we store the honey in these. Basically, we have to make up about another um, 2,000 or so boxes uh, for um, this year. Taroake nei, ka ako tātau i ngā tikanga kohe mere i tēnei ngahere i ngā wā o mua. Kaore wā te nuinga o ngā iwi tikanga kohe mere, engari kia ngai tūhoi i te urewera, Mai rāno te mere e whāngai ana i te iwi, whakatipuranga atu, whakatipuranga mai. I tipu ake a korotau tāmi ana i te urewera, a kai te maumahara ia ki ngā tikanga kohi mere o mua, hei kai mā te iwi. O te nana o mere, um, kai roto te rā i ngā, i ngā mahere, Nā mahere o, o kupāke kei te rāwā. Ai te maramara tau e, ki nā wahana o te tau, āhea nā miere, āhea nā miro, āhea nā tawa, āhea nā pikopiko, āhea nā kouka. Nē, e rā mōmō mea katoa. Kai te māta tau rā tau ki e rā e, orana ai te pūtei au. Ana ko kita wake puti puti ana. Ana ka puti puti ana te te rangi ora kare pai na na miere mo te kai. Kai te koro ta ta mo na miere o mua. Kare ano na 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 bi hive si ata mai kite neyau. Ana ko ina te wai ta na wai ka me na bi. Kai iru nai te rā kau, kai iru nā rā nōra. Ara, te rā pe kai hārera. Ka hārera tu te pīhire, te kuini. Te wāhi kā tau te kuini. A wāhi pērā. Nā e tahi kā pīhiru nai te rā kau. Wā mea he maki maki. Hei pīhiru nā. Ana, kwa heri atu koe nā mea i nā mea, nā mea kai te au wāhi. Wā tahu nā, wā tahu nā. Ana, kai te au wāhi. Hare i te mūra. Nari kai te au ai, ai, ai faka, ai faka rāru rāru i nā pī. O tēnei te taura, he maki maki, koe nei te maki maki, ai pī ki te rākau. Nai tu wāi au e tamori ki ana ko hau te maki maki. A mea he au ki te pī ki tēnei, ki te heri i tēnei. Nari, nō muri mai, ka ki tēa, koe nā te maki maki. Kū mea! Kū mea! Kū mea! Ah, come by! The Trust has um, always uh, looked back to um, its history and where we've come from and the land and the people of this land. So the mātauranga um, of the nahere and of this land inspires us in all that we do. We have worked hard to forge relationships with um, science organisations throughout New Zealand that are relevant to what we do. And, um, and when we come to the honey business, um, there's no difference. So we've worked really hard to understand the biology of the bee and um, training our beekeepers in these things, not just in the beekeeping, but to understand um, bee behaviour and um, why it happens, and then to understand what's really happening in our bush and to observe what the bees are doing in our bush. <laughs> 
tai o nga tino wawa tā te tua whenua trust e, he kimi i e tahi āhua tā e whai ora ngai nga mokopuna mena tamai ana ko te miere tēnā. Wene te koha te tua whenua jauna e, ki nga mokopuna ki nga, ki nga, ki nga tamaniki o ko te wehe wehe whare pi tētahi o ngā mahi nui i te mutunga o ia hikutau kohi miere. Mā reira ka huarua ake ngā whare pi hei puna miere mā mānoa hani New Zealand. Ko te hia hia kia rua mano ngā whare pi hei te tau rua mano te kaumā whitu. First thing we'll do is we'll look through this hive for the, um, the queen in this hive and we'll set her aside so that we don't end up with two queens in, in, in the new hive. So we're gonna, once we find her we'll set her aside and then we'll start removing the, some brood and honey and bees into the new hive. There's a queen bee I found it. She's over here. So we'll just set this frame aside, we'll put it over there out of the way, and now we'll start making a split. So here we've got an um, empty box with drawn out frames in. So what we'll do is we're gonna take um, half of these frames out of here and um, set them over here. And we'll, these are all um, drawn out frames that had honey in, and we're gonna use them as brood frames now. So. We're going to go into our parent hive and find some good frames of brood. So we're going to put this, this into the new hive. Probably going to take three of these out and put them into the new uh, into the split because we, we're starting a new colony and all that's going to be in, in there is the, the bees that are on these frames. So the more brood we have, the more new bees that are going to hatch in the new uh, hive. And uh, the parent hive has already got a lot of bee numbers in there and the, the old queen will she'll just lay these frames out so that the, the old hive the, will pick up quite quickly compared to the new hive. It's just a honey frame, honey and pollen that one. Just a bit of feed for the bees and we'll put that in there. So that, that's ready to go now. All we have to do is um, put our queen in. Yeah, this is a um, mated queen in a cage. We buy them off um, queen bee breeders and um, we put one of these in each of our new hives and they come with uh, the nurse bees that look after and feed the queen and all that. We'll put it in the middle of all the brood and the bees to keep her warm and within about 24 hours the, these, all these bees here will realise that this is their new queen and they would have started a new colony so we'll just slip that in there between the brood frames. Close it up. This is um, a feeder. We um, put this on and we fill it up with sugar syrup. We use bracken fern so the, the bees don't drown in the sugar syrup. So we'll put that on and we won't come back to this hive for about two weeks because it takes about two weeks for that queen to settle down and start laying. And so yeah, and then hopefully by then she would have started laying eggs and got us a new hive there. So, and this is yeah, how we're going to increase our numbers going into the future. Uh, one of our hopes in the future is to start breeding our own queens. Most commercial uh, honey businesses have their own queen bee breeders. You know, it's a, it becomes a full-time job. When you're looking at, um, I suppose, thousands of hives, that means thousands of queens, and uh, expense-wise, it's, it's a big cost to us. So yeah, it'll help, I suppose, support our business and could also become another, I suppose, arm of our business. You know, we could potentially be selling queen bees of our own to other honey um, companies. You walk in the forest, you hear the hum of the bees. You walk in your forest, you hear the song of the birds. Hey, all those things, in terms of the big picture, in terms of the continuation of our forest. 
is having all those things there.